Hi, it's Andy from Century Mallet Instrument Service, and by now you should have received your Imperial 55, uh, your Deegan Imperial 55 Viper Harp. And uh, what you can see on the floor right now what I have is the form screen for the disassembled table part. Uh, you should have all these parts uh, in front of you laid out. And if you do, that's this is your good starting point. So everything's unwrapped, everything is completely disassembled. Uh, you will receive your instrument pretty much just like this, except it will be all bubble wrap and everything. So once you have everything completely um, unwrapped and ready to go, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put together the two end pieces. You're going to want to put, put together this frame. So uh, you'll see this small part of the crossbar, uh, the side that is uh, does not have a sleeve on it, the side that is completely um, open, you're going to want to put that into the low end piece. And you're going to want that ring to go right in here. And it's going to lock in place just like that. So it's not going to go anywhere. The second piece, which is the longer cross piece right here, you're going to want to put, go ahead and put this into, again, pedals. The pedals right here, that's going to go in the middle. So this part, the side that's pretty much open, is going to go right in here. Again, you're going to look at this, pretty much this side right there, the side with the notch. It'll go straight in, just like that. pull and it should lock right in place when it twists sideways it should go right inside the next thing you'll do here is pull this pin right here the pedal should lock right in place just like that and there should be a hole on the other side where it comes right through and the pedal is now locked in place so now you have your two end pieces pretty much assembled. Now you have to put them together. So this will come up and this is, this will be safe just to rest just like that. That's okay. As long as you're not putting any more weight on it, that should be fine. Low end piece will come up and you just connect the two together just like this. Again, you're going to want this to be this way so it locks right in pull the pin back and it should lock right in place so the next thing now that you have these two together uh, the first thing you may want to do is to actually now that you have the motor completely um, uh, available and out of the way of everything is you'll want to plug in the motor so that way you won't have to do this anytime later. Just leave that on the ground right here. And this plug goes right on there. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Uh, there's no there, there's no wrong way to put this in there. So it goes right in there. And also the belt. The belt will go into this slot here. You'll pull it down and you'll see this pulley right under here. And you just go into the slot. Just leave it there. We're not going to do anything just yet. Just leave it right here. The next thing to do is going to be assembling the resonators. So first we'll assemble the natural resonators. So you're going to see this piece right here. That's at a slant. You're going to find the corresponding piece that's on a slant. Just like this. So to find these two pieces. Uh, if you need a person to help you with this, that is fine. As it does slide into one another. So you'll see that this one actually has slots for this side. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the resonator pulsators, these little fans, are pretty even, are gonna be the same or even. So if one side is 
facing up like that and one side is flat, you want to make sure this is flat. Uh, same if this if save or if either flat or if they're up just to make sure that they're even doesn't matter which which way they go uh, this way or this way as long as both sides are the same so that goes right inside make sure that's even it's not going to click it'll just it'll fit snug all the way inside And that will go on. You see a, a small, a small post here, and there's a little notch there. There's a hole where it goes right in. Same thing on this side. You see this bracket right there? It goes right into that hole. The accidental resonators are going to be a little bit different. You are going to slide them in, but there is a notch here. There's a bracket that has a notch uh, along with a corresponding piece to hold it in place. So just make sure that you're going to be, that's going to be your last step when you're putting these together. But you want to make sure that you put them together just like the other ones, pretty even. So go ahead and flip it around make sure that the pulsators are even on, on each side. Go ahead and slide them together. This might have a little bit of a click just because the bottom part. Again, once that's together, you go ahead and flip this over and notch it in just like that. It should fit really snug. Once you have that together, again, there's gonna be a corresponding hole to this post on the bottom. So it'll go right in there. You wanna go straight from the top, straight down onto it. It should go right on there. So now that you have both of those resonators together and on the frame, you go ahead and take your belt, make sure that it's on the pulley on the bottom there. Go ahead and wrap it around both pulsator pulleys. And now that's all together and ready to go. Um, at this point, you'll want to, uh, actually if you want to test the motor, you can. So you'll take this. Take the plug, plug it in. And there's an on and off switch right here. Right now it's on the off position. You turn it on, the motor should be going. This dial, turn it to the right, it slows down the motor. Turn it to the left, it increases the speed. It should always be on the AC switch. If, if the motor doesn't go, everything's plugged in and the brake is completely off of it uh, make sure that and it's not going anymore uh, make sure that it's on AC and not on DC once that is all done you'll take your damper bar right here uh, the damper bar actually uh, does fold in half so you'll probably receive it just like this I'll take this out And right in here, you're gonna see a receiver hole. Goes right in there. And you wanna tighten it down. And you're gonna to wanna to tighten it down so it won't go anymore. Once that's locked in place, you're ready to go for, uh, you're actually gonna be, uh, just have this off to the side. You're gonna put in the, the rails next. And you're actually going to be putting in uh, number four and number one. By number four, I mean the one on the outside. Number one is the one that's closest to the player. So 
This is number four. I'll go ahead and put this in there. And you're going to want to fold it up just like this. And then put it into the slots first and then come right down onto the frame, just like that. And if you're confused as to where, um, how to put this on, obviously the, the front is going to be the biggest one, has the name Deegan right in the front. So that's, that's pretty obvious, but the rest of them, um, if you're going to have any kind of questions on, uh, this number one also has a Deegan on there, but it goes on number one. It goes on the one close to the player, and there's actually a number one stamped right on there. So there should be no confusion. Number four is also stamped on the inside. So once you have that all together, just like this, again, right into the right into the slots on each side, and just push down. Everything should be just fine on that. So the next one that's gonna come on is actually number three. Oops, sorry, number two. <laughs> Uh, this should have a number on there, number two, and that will go to the towards the inside of the resonator. So number one will face here, number two will face that. Just look at the number, you'll know which way it's facing. The other way to, to make sure that you're putting it on the correct way is to notice that this is a brake. This is a, a clutch here, this is for the damper bar, and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. So before you put on number three, you want to make sure that this nodal wire from underneath is actually in position, ready to go. You don't have to have it all the way, but make sure it's ready. You'll take number three. This is number three. And again, the number will actually face the resonators. Just like the other ones. You want to put it in the slots and then bring it down. You want to make sure that this nodal wire from underneath right here, just number two, you want to make sure it's underneath here so it'll go directly in there and it'll rest just like that. All right, and the next thing you want to do is to make sure you put these nodal wires in from four and one onto rails number th three and two. Uh, so just move it over to the side and they're going to have a sleeve here that actually goes uh, not into any of the resonator tubes, but actually in between the tubes. You want to make sure that that is right in there. Same thing with one. This sleeve is going to go right in between these two tubes here and then into this hole. So now you have the whole frame ready to go assembled. The damper bar is next and this will actually go you want to make sure that this fork is in the correct position it might be uh, the spring might be a little bit off to the side when you get it but so you want to make sure that this is kind of a little bit more in position just like that you should have a felt a palm washer and then a lock, um, a lock nut right there. So these are all threaded except for the felt. So uh, this actually helps it to stabilize and be in the correct position. So uh, if this is the other, if the fork is the other way, that's incorrect. The fork always goes in the same direction as the arms. So make sure that that fork is, is this way. And you wanna place it right here so that the clutch lines up with the bracket that's right here, the holding bracket. So once that's on there and you've got it placed flat on rails number three and two, you go ahead and get go over to the arms. You have to pick one or the other. It doesn't have to be both. You actually pull off, pull to one side there. And then pull to the other one there. 
and that should be it. It might be a little, you have, might have to force it a little bit, but not much. The next thing we do is there is a, uh, a rod, a telescoping rod that actually is attached that goes into the lower pull rod of this pedal. So what you want to do is make sure it clears underneath. You're going to come up, make sure it's loose from the pedal. You're going to come up to the top over here. There's a small hook. You'll pull down on this and it hooks right on. At that point, you'll go ahead and tighten on the lower pull rod. You'll tighten down the that rod right there to be able to actually operate the pedal. And you should be able to actually operate it so that this clutch grabs onto this bracket. If you can, it's not low enough. So you'll move up a little bit. You'll have to come around here a sec. You can actually adjust the amount that you can pull down on it by raising this up. So raise this up and you can operate it. If it holds, you're good. You don't want it to come down too much though, because if you do, you're gonna start actually lifting up on this uh, on this rail here. It'll actually um, touch rail number three. So these arms should never touch rail number three. So you'll lower it just a little bit. The best way to do it is to actually operate it so that it's the clutch is on and you're able to get your fingers underneath and it'll just rest on your fingers tighten on there and now you have just enough room to release that brake and that is the exact amount that you want to be able to operate the pedal so we'll go ahead and keep this brake on there because we're going to put the bars on and it's better and easier to do without the damper bar coming up under the bars The easiest way, easiest way to put the bars on is to actually make sure that you have the cord wrapped around the wrapped around the top and the high end here. You have to wrap them around these these forks, these posts right here. Make sure that that's wrapped around first. And you'll pull the slack a little bit. Make sure that the um, the springs are unhooked hook around here and at that point you can now move all the bars onto the frame. Now you will have spacers here. I will put those on there for you. Uh, so that way you make sure that even though that there is, there is no, um, a note should not be going on there. You won't, you're not missing anything, but it just doesn't, it's set up just like a keyboard, so these are the black keys and these are the white keys, just like a piano. So it's going to go three, two, three, two, three, two. So once you have all those on there in the correct position, We'll go ahead and pull, pull these tight, and hook the spring on there. Next are the naturals. Again, same operation where you want your cord to be wrapped around here first. Make sure that that's on there all the way. The springs are unhooked. That's wrapped around just like that, pretty evenly. And then just move each bar into position, making sure that they're on the forks. You go ahead and pull that over just like that 
And then the last thing to do is just press down on the pedal to release the damper bar. It should be operating as, as it should. And now you've assembled the whole uh, Deegan 55 Imperial. So that first part of the video was for complete assembly of the Deegan Imperial 55 Vibra Harp. Uh, if you ever want to move this instrument, this next part of the video is going to be for disassembly. Uh, first thing we're going to do, uh, make sure that your port is unplugged. Uh, get that out of the way for the motor. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come over to the, uh, the side of the instrument. There are two springs here. Well, that closer. Two springs here that are hooked. You'll unhook these springs. Unhook these springs. Uh, you'll want to take off. Kind of want to hook them back together, but make sure that they're off of these, off of these hooks right here. Once you get that off of there, just like that, you're gonna make some noise. Put them in the same place. And if you are going to stack them, make sure that you want to stack the bigger one on the bottom. So again, same thing. You want to hook them here so that they're not gonna go anywhere. Take it out of that hook speed. Like that. So nice and safe. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is actually going to unhook the damper bar here. And that is an operation if you go underneath the instrument and you undo the hook just by pulling down on this lever. I'll show you really quick what that is. You'll pull down on that and it will come out of that hook. There's a hook here uh, just on the side of the damper bar where this goes in. So you just undo that and it should come right out. So that's the first thing you want to do for the damper bar. The next thing you want to do is actually undo it from the brackets on each end. They are kind of compressed in there so you will want to give it a little bit of a tug uh, on each side and it should come right out. So you've now released the damper bar, and that can go off to the side. These nodal, what are called nodal wires, that's the next thing you're going to want to do. You're going to want to take that. It's okay if this comes up and out of the way. Same thing with this. This comes up and out of the way. And there's one more here on the bottom. So you're going to be able to get that out as soon as you get one of these out. So we'll take the number three rail. And it's actually marked number three. It should be marked number three uh, somewhere on the bottom here. And then marked right there, number three. So this will fold up as so. Then you'll take number two out. And you'll be able to tell all the numbers here actually go towards the resonators. So if you're ever confused as far as when you're putting it back together, um, uh, just make sure you know where the numbers are actually going to go towards the resonators. So once that is, once those are off, uh, you can now take off number one and number four. The easiest way to do it is just to basically lift up from the middle and let it fold in on itself. Then you can take it out from either uh, section, either end piece. Next thing you want to do is you're going to undo the belt from the uh, from the resonator hose, and that just comes right out, just like that. Just comes off. And then you're now able to take these off. Uh, the resonators do come apart, so they actually slide in and out of each other. Uh, just make sure that uh, if you don't have a good handle on it, if you need somebody else to do it with you, that's fine. Uh, just make sure you're doing it really carefully. Probably the best way to do the, the one in the front 
going to be approaching it from the front. This one's a little bit different. It does come apart, but if you look here, there's actually a small uh, clamp that actually comes off. So this will this will go in and out. It keeps it it keeps this whole thing together. So you're going to want to take that apart first. Then it should all come apart. Next thing you want to do is you want to uh, pull up on this guy here. You want to pull this up because you, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this out. So this is a, you just pull that out and it has a, uh, it has a hole that actually goes through in front. So pull that off to the side. It should stay pretty much right there. Uh, you want it out of the way so that you can come underneath here. And you'll pull this ring back and out. And it should allow it to just come right out. take this one and lay it down on its side you can see where the motor is here it'd be a little bit easier to take out once you have it lying down it will come should come right out and now you've completely disassembled the m55 or not the m55 sorry the vegan 55 imperial 